Okay, this tutorial is looking at how you might import a classification sheet rather than manually set up no, you know, attributes and classifications. So, um, in this example, I have the data for my cases already out here, the metadata, the quantitative data, I have it already out here in an Excel table. Um, <clears throat> so the idea of the case, just to be clear, in case you're not familiar with that, we make a case out of each person's interview. Um, we make people cases out of it in this example, and we now have a case for every person in our study. And then we link that to a classification. I don't have one yet, but a classification is like a table that holds all of the attributes, which is age, country, uh, education, etc. So they're each going to be an attribute. And of course, each case will have the correct information populated against that. So that's the concept. And I just want to import this rather than do it manually. If the wizard I'm about to show you is working for only for quant data, in other words, all the data in my classification sheet is quantitative. It's not a survey coming in with open and closed questions. That's a different uh, wizard in, in vivo, and it's a different video, a different set of steps. You will end up with the same thing. But in our example today, we're just importing Things like demographics or metadata for literature. In other words, it's all quantifiable information and it's already populated in Excel. There are two things I have to check in Excel before I do my import. The first one is that the names match and they have to match exactly. So if I go down here to my people cases, you can see that the names match exactly. Now, if I had um, Anna and her surname or her second name in here and just Anna in here, that wouldn't match, even though only part of the, the name matches it must all match exactly. It's not a huge problem if I've been inconsistent in how I set up my Excel table and my interview file names. All I would have to do is right click, do export list here in my cases. And that would give me an Excel table with a list of my cases. I could then copy and paste that column in here and match them up that way. So that's generally the first thing you have to check. And the second thing is that all of the fields, all of this, these attributes like country and education and gender are all on the same line, preferably the first line. Although it doesn't have to be the first line, it's just better if it is. Uh, you don't have to make any adjustments in the import wizard, um, but they must all be on the same line. Sometimes if you're using SurveyMonkey, Qualtrics, Bristol services like that, that do online surveys, um, then you know, they don't always come down on the same line. You may have to do a little bit of cutting and pasting. But the data cleansing generally is usually quick and easy. It shouldn't be a huge amount of work to fix up the database before you bring in. So that's your, basically that the names match and that the files are all, uh, the fields are all in the first row um, and then we're pretty much ready to go. And that can automate what would otherwise be a, a whole uh, manual process. So if I go down here to my, my um, case classifications, at the moment I don't have any, but I'm about to import one. So I right click in this area here, uh, known as list view, and I import a classification sheet. And I browse to my case classifications, case profiles. That's the table that I have. I only have to make one change in this wizard, so it's a pretty straightforward wizard to follow. I'm leaving those three checks just to explain them to you. I'm telling it to make attributes if they don't exist, and they don't in our case at the moment. I'm telling it to update the existing items. In other words, I already have my cases. I just have to tell it where they are and it'll update them. It's not gonna make new ones because I already have them. And I'm going to replace the attribute values of existing files or cases. In other words, um, this is really for if you're doing regular, if, you, if, if your information is coming in on a regular basis, um, you might want to update your table on a regular basis because for example, with surveys, they don't all come in in a nice, neat, um, group they tend to come in in dribs and drabs so I might want to regularly update my table. So I'm leaving those three checked and um, the only change I have to make then is in this screen. It's asking me here now that it knows I have my cases already where are those cases and I'm telling it I'm matching on the names they're not in the cases folder they're in the people cases folder so I'm telling it to match them there and I'm leaving this box checked as well create new cases if they do not exist and that's because if there's a mismatch between my Excel table and my Word documents, in other words, if I have an interview that I don't have in Excel, 
or I have a, a record in Excel that I don't have an interview for, it's going to create a blank case either way and I'm going to realise I'm missing some piece of information. I can go and get it and update. So that's just making sure I haven't missed anything. So I'm saying next to that, I don't have to make any changes. You can take that pretty much as the default screen and now it will import the file and there it is all linked up. Uh, if I go to my um, people cases now, you'll see if I right click on Annette, inside her case is what she said, all her words. So there they are, that's every Annette's contribution. Link to that, this is, happens to be coming from a focus group, not an interview. But we can still make cases for those. That's a different video as well if you need to know about that one. And then if I right click here and do case properties. And there they are all linked up now with my metadata. So all of the queries that are available here now in the explore tab, like cross tab coding queries, word frequency queries, um, compound queries are all available now because I have properly constituted cases. So the interview or the focus group, the people become cases, the quantitative data, the qualitative data for that case is inside it. And then linked to that is their identity, who they are, uh, what they said versus who they are. And that's linked at unit level and the unit of observation being a person. And that's it. Your classification sheet is now in and working. If you have any questions on that, you can post them to me and we'll certainly uh, try to address them. Cheers.